All right, joining me now is a gentleman who has a very exciting, well, I should say grappling super fight coming up. It's a, it's about whatever you want to call it. This, of course, will be at one fight night 10, Johnson versus Marais 3. This will be Cinco de Mayo. And by the way, it's going to be in the United States at the First Bank Arena in right outside Denver, Colorado, Broomfield. I am joined now, of course, by Ty Ruotolo. Hi, Ty. How are you? Doing great, brother. Super stoked to be here and uh, super stoked to get on the card, man. I can't wait. I'm counting the days. Where, where am I talking to you right now? Where are you? I'm currently in Huntington Beach, California, SoCal. This is my home where I grew up. I was born in Maui, but I came out here when I was real young and uh, spent most of my life out here. It's real, it's real sunny, but it's cold. You wouldn't think so. It's, it's fake. You know? <laughs> the sun's fake. And so it's funny. You, do you and your, how often do you and your brother train in the garage? I saw him earlier and I see Matt's everywhere. How often does that happen? Yeah, we're in here. No, nowadays, not as much. My brother and I, we got a spot in San Diego, a couple hours down south where we train uh, at our spot in Atos. But growing up, we used to train in here every single day. You know, the mats in this garage, this is where uh, pretty much most of our success is really due to. You know, we've trained in here fucking countless hours. You know, And uh, yeah, definitely a lot of good evolution in here as far as jiu-jitsu goes and a lot of good times, a lot of good scraps, black eyes and uh, yeah, laughs for sure. Now, you're taking on Rainier de Ritter. He was previously one's double weight champion at, at middle and light heavy, now just middle. He lost it to Anatoly um, Malakin. Uh, but he is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He's obviously a game competitor, even if his last uh, MMA bout didn't go that well. Size him up for me. What do you think you are up against when you take on Rainier de Ritter? Um, yeah, I actually just seen him. We were on that same card over there in the Philippines. It was cool to watch him. Fight. He didn't have the best performance over there. He had a tough one against uh, Anatoly. But usually, uh, you know what? Uh, I think he's. I think he's about six four, six three. He's pretty much a taller guy, you know. So uh, I'm excited to put my uh, my size against his. You know, I like to kind of have that uh, that undercard under. Uh, what's it kind of called? The uh, no the. Uh, Sorry, one sec. My buddies were just distracting the shit out of me real it's quick. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I like to kind of be the underdog, you know, in that kind of situation, you know, and I usually I'm really good at fighting a lot of big guys. I usually fight bigger opponents. So, you know, I'm excited to put my uh, my skills to the test against uh, someone taller and bigger again. Do you do you watch tape ahead of matches like these? Uh, yeah, I, I probably should watch his tape for sure. He, he actually <laughs> fought my professor in a match, which is uh, cool to watch. He did really good. Um, I wasn't expecting him to do as good as he did. And uh, yeah, he's very he's got a strong game. He went and competed in the Europeans, uh, a very renowned jiu-jitsu event uh, over in Portugal. He did really well. He got double gold over there as well. So I was just very surprised to to see, uh, you know, his evolution in jiu-jitsu along. You know, he's a dub, double champ, or he was in MMA. So I'll be very interested to see how much he's evolved since his last fight with my professor. And uh, I still think I'm definitely going to have more than enough skills to be able to take him, but he's got the size advantage as well, you know, so it's definitely going to be a good test. Uh, yeah, I think I should be able to take him no matter what, though. Now, of course, your professor from Atos is Andre Galvan. How would you, I mean, obviously there's going to be a lot of answers here, right? Because partly size is going to be a dictating of style here too. But stylistically, how do you differ from Galvan and his game? Um, we have fairly different games, you know, my professor, he's, uh, definitely a bit older than me. I think he's like my age. So I think got a lot more experience and he uses that to his advantage. Um, he's definitely a bit shorter and he's a bit, uh, not as lengthy. And for me, I got very lengthy arms and, uh, and I'm not, I'm not physically as strong as my professor either, you know? And that was one thing that I saw in that fight with Rainier DeRitter is that Rainier, uh, really took him to him physically you know he took it to him so I think I think it's definitely going to be physically probably going to be a pretty tough match you know but I've grown a lot since that and uh and I think I'm gonna have a lot of looks that he's not used to seeing you know I'm very experienced in jiu-jitsu I've been doing it my whole life so, you know and I think I can definitely make him very uncomfortable in a lot of positions that uh you know, he's not ready for it, So do, do you think there's an ideal, like, obviously uh, everyone's style is going to be a little bit different. Everyone's body type is going to be a little bit different. Everyone's goals in jujitsu is going to be a little bit different, right? So it's very personalized in that way, but for competition purposes, is there a more ideal body type than others? Or jujitsu, you say yes. a better body type. Yes. You know, it's hard to say, you know, cause right now the best, I think biggest advantage you could have if you're in jujitsu is being on steroids. 
you know, there's no testing in the sport, really, you know, so it seems to be all, you know, all the best guys in the sport are extremely roided, you know, to be honest with you. So some of them are tall, some of them are short, you know, some of them are long. For me, the biggest thing for me is just to stay natural and uh, my body type, I'm lengthy and I have a really good cardio and it's brought me to where I'm at. You know, I think the cardio probably has something to do with that because, you know, fighting these really strong individuals, they're only strong for a few minutes for the most part. And then their, their strength really dwindles the longer the match goes. So for my brother and I both, we really pride ourselves on our cardio and uh, being able to move, stay flexible, move a lot is really important for us too. So, um, you know, it's working so far. The goal is to get past Rainier, to beat, you know, all the biggest, best guys in the sport. And then, uh, you know, I hopefully prove that this body type's, you know, better than, <laughs> than the big right one, you know. Uh, how would you say for folks who've never seen how would you say your game is either the same or differs from your brother? Man, my brother has a crazy game and it's real. We have very similar games. You know, we grew up together, everything we've done, everything together, you know, so uh, our games are going to be pretty similar, but we, I think in our strategies, when we fight are a little bit different, you know, when I fight, I don't like my opponent to have any space whatsoever. And uh, I like to be as dominant as possible. And my brother, I can tell he, really puts an emphasis on getting the submission and, and and making the match exciting, you know, which is super important. And uh, I try to take a lot from him in that regard. And I see like in some situations, sometimes he does that too much and he'll put himself in a bad situation or a bad position. And uh, so we learn a lot from each other. You know, I learn a lot from his game. You know, he learned from mine. I'm more of a tactician. I don't make as many mistakes and I'm very, uh, I'm very, I, I get to my goals, you know, but uh, I think he, uh, I think he's definitely got a lot I can learn from him and vice versa. We bounce off each other really good. You know, years ago when Meta Morris was around, one of the first kind of like pro jujitsu shows, they would have MMA fighters go up against like elite, you know, uh, jujitsu only competitors and the MMA fighters would always lose. But there was one thing they were pretty good at, which was getting up off off the bottom. A lot of times they could like wrestle their way up even without any kind of fence on that Meta Morris um, platform, which is just a flat surface. Have you rolled with MMA fighter, elite MMA fighters a lot? And have you noticed that they have slightly different games by virtue of the realities of their sport that affects their jujitsu? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think a lot of MMA fighters, you know, when they're grappling, their main goal is to get to their feet, right? And get back to what they know. So for the most part, you know, you know jiu-jitsu guys don't really think that way. You know, the jiu-jitsu fighters are thinking more, how do I get to the submission? And for a lot of guys, that's being on bottom, pulling guard and attacking from their guard. Uh, for me, per se, I don't like to do that because my brother and I, we take more of a realistic approach in our jiu-jitsu. You know, if we're on bottom, pulling guard and, you know, playing footsies, looking for the leg lock that, that can work every once in a while, but in a real situation, you're going to get your face pounded in, you know? So uh, I think, you know, all these guys in, in, uh, in jujitsu that are MMA fighters that have, you know, the ability to get up. That's where that comes from. You know, what was the question exactly going back to that. Just that, like, oh, what differences have you noticed in potentially even rolling with them that you could tell, like, oh, yeah, their games are obviously not as good, but they've got some unique things that have been, you know, that they've picked up by virtue of their realities in their sport. Yeah, for sure. And just, like, just the survival aspect of it, too. You know, MMA fighters, when they get put in a bad position, they seem very hard to put away for good. You know, they're pretty good at at least surviving, right? So and maybe that has to do something with the gloves, with chokes, or whatever that is. But I always seem to think that uh, MMA fighters are just pretty tough, you know? Fair enough. Or so yeah. than just you guys. Go ahead. No, no, no it's, a, it's a fair point. Uh, this, this particular bout, now usually, correct me if I'm wrong, and I could be, one typically does 10-minute grappling matches. This one is 12. Did I get that right? Uh yeah honestly i need to go double check i think so <laughs> yeah I but i guess know. i'm gonna guess you don't like you could like for example u.s grappling does like what like all their tournaments are no time limit i'm assuming 12 minutes would not in any way be a problem for you right uh no not at all like i said the longer the match goes the better for me you know uh I always, the first couple of matches, our first minutes of the match is always the toughest for myself because I'm dealing, you know, with the size and the strength, usually fighting a lot of bigger opponents. At least that's been the case the last couple of years. So, uh, you know, the longer the match goes for me, the better. If I could do no time limit matches, I'd do that, you know, 20 minute matches. I keep a really high pace in my matches no matter what. So eventually my opponents get tired and then uh, that's usually when the sub comes.
You know, there was a controversy recently. Mikey Musumeci went up against, I forget the gentleman's name. He was like the combat Sambo world champion. Right. And uh, he shredded his knee completely, right? Like ACL, PCL, the whole bit. Like The whole knee is gone. He'll be out for a year, if maybe like forever. Like it was a really bad thing. And it's kind of funny. Throughout my reporting career, this has been true all the way back to 2004. I can remember the first time I heard it which was that like jujitsu black belts are just way better grapplers than the Sambo guys. Uh, and th that debate kind of reared its head again. And I've had, I can, I cannot tell you how many, I'm talking world champion black belts have told me that. Do you feel that way as well? And if so, why is there a disparity between the, the, the best pure jujitsu guys and the best pure Sambo guys in terms of grappling skill? In terms of grappling skill, absolutely. The jujitsu guys are better in the situation of that. I think just really because, jiu-jitsu there's thousands of techniques right every single day there's new techniques being created you know and you can really never stop learning in jiu-jitsu you know? and you know i know i got thousands of techniques in my mind you know i forget techniques probably every single day and i also learn techniques every day you know there's just there's so much you can do with your body in jiu-jitsu and uh and sambo there's definitely a lot of techniques but there's not as much you know and uh and on top of that too jiu-jitsu the sole purpose of jiu-jitsu is to get to the submission right no matter the size of your opponent. And in Sambo, uh, I, I'm not really experienced in Sambo, so I can't really uh, say too much. But from what I've seen is that, uh, you know, takedowns and and, and that's the, I don't think the submission is as important, you know, as, as in jiu-jitsu. So I, and it's in a grappling match for, I think the jiu-jitsu guy is going to win 10 out of the 10 times, you know, right? There might be an the exception if uh, there's a big size difference, but I think jiu-jitsu really takes it uh, as far as skill goes. And an MMA match is definitely a bit different. You know, you can't just pull a guard and get to the legs. You know, you're going to be in trouble. All of the different shows and the different competitions have slightly different rules. There's gi, there's no gi, there's leg locks, there's blah, blah, blah. There's all kinds of stuff. But in terms of where you compete, is there any one rule you would love to see changed? Right. And we were already positing that there's a ton of different rule sets. But even with that, is there some kind of rule change in jujitsu that should be implemented that hasn't been? Um, well, in jujitsu, there's, you know, there's gi and there's also no gi jujitsu. Right. So there's, there's a lot of different, um, you know, there's a lot of different rules and, and both that I think can be changed and moved a little bit. I think the biggest thing in jujitsu is just the call the stalling calls. And, and one has added that to uh, the rule set really well because, man, a lot of these jitsu guys are really, really boring. They'd rather win than put on an exciting match, which is a problem because it's not going to make the score grow, right? So, uh, you know, as long as we're on the stalling calls, I think that's going to really help to at least grow the sport a bit and keep the matches more exciting, right? Because jitsu really can be exciting. There's so much to see. And there's, uh, there's you know, like I said, there's thousands of different techniques and positions. And if you go through a lot of different positions, it can be beautiful and, and great for people to see. But if you stall in, in one position for 10 minutes, you know, no one wants to watch that. And it's a lose-lose for everyone. So I think as far as this, making the stalling calls go, that's really it. It's up to the own individual athlete to make the difference so if you want to get excited you want to put on an exciting match you're gonna get called back and uh i think really that's what one's looking for so it sounds like what you it sounds like what you'd prefer is at least some kind of approach the way that collegiate or high school wrestling is where the referees are on the whistle about promoting action is that how you feel right absolutely i remember i did a wrestling match when i was a kid after just doing jiu-jitsu my whole life i just randomly went and did one and um, I couldn't believe it. The second I stopped moving, you know, the referees I'm stalling. You know? I'm like, oh, wow, I got to keep going. And that's why you see so many exciting rad matches in, in, in wrestling. You know, and in jiu-jitsu, you know, you, you get kind of the opposite a lot of the times, even though there's so much technique, there's so much to see, there's so much going on. A lot of the times it's just a stalemate, you know. So, you know, to, to, the, to the average eye, to the naked eye, it's just it's not something worth watching, right? In terms of your future, this is a great opportunity for you. This is going to be one's debut, I believe, in the United States. You get to pr compete as a grappler on this card. I asked your brother this question as well, so I'll ask you, which is, what is the long-term play? When I, I, I'm 43, so like 20 years ago, when jujitsu guys wanted to make a lot of money and you know do well for themselves, they had to go into MMA. It's really not as much the case at all anymore. I'm wondering, you're very young, but it, within 10 years, do you expect to have an MMA career or not? No, 100% is that's the plan is to move into MMA. You know, um, I plan to do that with my brother alongside me. I think he's m wanting to make the move a bit quicker than I am. You know, I can see in his eyes he's got the fire for MMA. And I do too, but there's definitely still some stuff in jiu-jitsu that I want to accomplish. There's still some people that I need to beat. 
And uh, I definitely see myself getting in the ring. It's possible at the end of this of this year, but I'm thinking next year is more likely it. Uh, I want to be really ready. And I think my jitsu will take me far. I just want to make sure, you know, everything comes together, you know, my wrestling, my hands, and I'm fully ready for it. But I got big aspirations for that. I want to, uh, I want to get to the top in anything that I do, you know, and apply myself. And right now I'm still focused on getting to the top of jiu-jitsu. You know, I'm uh, gone to the top in my weight, but I'm not the best overall, you know, and there's some people that I want to beat. So I need to take down, you know, a lot of big guys. Do you have a favorite win? A favorite win? Yeah. Not the, maybe not a particular person that I won over that maybe made it feel so good, but a particular submission. There was this one that I hit at ADCC on on Pedro Mourinho. It just felt really good after I after I subbed him. I had the whole the whole audience was yelling, and I just felt so much energy. You know, I threw up a little flex. It made me feel real good. That's probably my favorite submission. <laughs> you know, they all they all kind of feel pretty similar to me, to be honest with you. There's never one that's that, that's too much crazier than another. They're all very I, satisfying. <laughs> uh, you have a win, technically speaking, over Felipe Pena. Um, I'm wondering, Penn has got a, another match coming up with Gordon Ryan. It's I don't know how many they've had at this point, but they've got another one coming up. Uh, who's going to win that one and why? Man, that's a tough one. I've been training with Philippe, you know, so I can't say too much. Uh, you know, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's going to be an interesting match. Philippe looks like he's in much better physical condition than he was last match he had with Gordon. And, uh, and I know Philippe has really good technique. Gordon's technique has improved a lot since, you know, their first two matches where Gordon lost to him. So it's a tough one. You know, it's, it could really go either way. I, if I had to, if I had to choose, I would go, I would go Gordon just because I think he has an advantage on the feet. And I think whoever stays on top is going to win the match. But uh, I do think it's, it's possible for Pena to win a hundred percent. If you get some good uh, submissions going every good uh, sweeps, you know, he's going to have to offset Gordon. It's going to be hard to get Gordon off from on top of you. You know, he's a very heavy individual. But if he can do that, 100% Penn takes the match. If not, Gordon stays on top. I see it being a long match for Penn. Well, I can't wait to see this one. This is going to be great, obviously. Uh, Cinco de Mayo. I mean, what could be better than Cinco de Mayo? This is going to be one fight night 10. Of course, this will be, uh, you can get tickets, by the way, at 1fc.com slash one fight night 10. It'll be at the First Bank Center in Broomfield, Colorado. Last question about this. Uh, I've been to many fights out there. I saw Joe Lazan fight uh, Kenny Florian at that arena. I went to a glory fight at that arena. They do a lot of huffing and puffing out there in Broomfield, Colorado, because it's at elevation. Any concerns about how that could affect the competition? No, 100%. Yeah, I definitely don't want to pride myself on my cardio and go there and start gassing, that's for sure. Definitely going to try and get out there a bit earlier. I've been in Colorado once before, and I was walking around the place just huffing and puffing. So definitely want to get there a bit earlier. Hopefully my opponent gets there you know, a couple of days before. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really excited to fight. You know, Cinco de Mayo, Colorado, the first U.S card for one i'm super honored to be on the card and uh i'm ready to go it's on. This is, yeah this is going to be a lot of fun uh can't wait to watch it can't wait to see the main event demetrius johnson and adriano moraes for the third time and can't wait to see your grappling contest against rainier de Ritter. should be so much fun ty ruotolo thank you so much and we look forward to may 5th right on brother thank you